Hello friends. Today we will see the 8051 IO configuration and how to program the ports as an input or output. For this example, we will consider 89C51 40 pin microcontroller. It has got 4 IO ports port 0, port 1, port 2, and port 3. All these ports we can use as a single 8 bit entity like a byte. So, port latch can be read as an entire byte or we can also control individual pins of microcontroller either any of the port pin as an input or output independent of any other pin of these ports some of the ports have got dual functions just like as we have seen here port 0 port 2 and port 3 has got dual functions port 0 has additional feature of multiplexed low order address bus and data bus so either i can use it as, as a port or i can use it as an address and data bus multiplexed port 1 has got no dual function port 2 serves a high order address bus so port 0 and port 2 combinedly serves as an address bus a0 to a15 and port 0 also provides bi-directional data bus which is multiplex with the lower order address bus. Port 3 provides multiple inputs for providing serial IO functionality, connecting external interrupt inputs to the microcontroller, connecting external pulses for counting to the timer inputs and if you are connecting external memories then read and write signals are also provided by port 3. Some of the microcontrollers from this family can source sufficient current to drive LEDs but not all. So we have to check the data sheets for specific microcontroller whether it can provide sufficient drives, syncing and sourcing capabilities. We will see how we can configure an entire port as an input or output. So here we are connecting port 1 as an input and port 2 to show the output read from port 1. So to configure input we have to send 1 to all latches of port which will disconnect the lower transistor of output circuitry and connect our the input circuitry could be enabled by reading instructions. So when we write one port becomes input. We can write FFH to port one, so entire port is configured input. We have cleared port two, so that later on we can reflect the output read from port one through the accumulator to the port two. So this is the initialization part, and this is the main loop. We can also call it a super loop, which will execute infinitely. So this loop processes the data from port 1, reads it into accumulator and directly it to port 2. So no further processing, only reading data from port 1 and sending it to the port 2. We can also check this simulation on Pinnacle 52 ID. So we can create new file. paste the code and now I will save this file say ports dot asl now I will compile the file you will see there are no errors no warnings the size of code is 12 bytes and this is the hex file generated. I can download this file onto the microcontroller directly also. So I have to check it in real time using suitable programmer. We need two additional windows code window and ports window to simulate this. We can get these windows from this view bar. So code memory window is there. Code memory window shows our code along with its of course and the ports window will show the input and output ledges of the ports. Here we can execute 
program either in pre run mode or in single step manner. So I can also use F5 or F8 also. So we can keep on putting F8. So it's a super loop where the code is being executed. I will run it in pre run mode. And now we can see whatever I write to P1 input latch will reflect on to the P2 output latch. So this is the simplest example. Whatever we are writing to port 1 reflects on port 2. We can do some further processing also before writing to port 2. This is one of the example how we can read an entire byte from port 1 latch and write into the port 2 latch. Similarly, we can go for bitwise manner also. So, in this bitwise manner, I will have to set some bit of port 1 and the reflect is on to the other bit. So, what we are doing here is we are using port 1.1 pin as an input and the status will be shown on to the port 1.4. I am explicitly using the purposefully using the same port so as to show individual pins can be configured input or output independent of the other pins. So this is the initialization part. I am setting the port 1.1 to make that pin input. This is the loop. This loop executes until P1.1 is logic high. So until that P1.4 remains cleared when I exit the loop by clearing the P1.1, the P1.4 will get set. Again, we will copy this program. Go into the pinnacle. I will save it. Then compile and link. 11 byte is the four sides. No errors. No warnings. Again, we will run it in a three running mode. So this loop keeps executing, we can see it using the single step manual. Only two instructions are executing one of the other, JB and CFR. So this loop keeps executing until the P1.1 is cleared. So here P1.4 is clear by this loop. When I clear this P1.1, we will see the output, the loop exits and P1.4 gets set. So just look at here at P1.4. When I clear it P1.1 bit, the loop exits and sets P1.4. This is how we can use any of the port pin independently 